Thomas and Friends. What's the first thing you think of when you hear that? Talking trains, the color blue, dystopian horror, what about video games? Thomas games are, at least to me, always a weird mix of just hit or miss. And what you also might not expect is the surprising amount of games there actually are for this brand. And since there's so many to talk about, I figured we'd keep things a bit simple and talk about three. Or in specific, the three that I actually played. Those being engines working together for the VTEC systems, the adventure series for the Sega Genesis, and arguably the most iconic and best Thomas video game to ever exist, the plug-and-play Thomas game. You know what, I'm really bad at intros. You're really bored, so you're watching someone talk about video games that are about a talking train. Let's just do this. Alright, so I figure the best way to do this is chronologically through the order I actually played these things, so uh, let's start with the VTech. Don't let the branding fool you. Sure, VTech is made for children. All of the games we talk about today are gonna be made for children. But this game in specific had quite a bit to it. This was made for the V-Smile and Motion system, and I think the biggest standout feature about this game, at least to a younger me, was the large character roster. You had the casual engines like Thomas, Percy, James, but this also was ramped up to the likes of Emily and even Diesel 10. There's also a pretty wide roster of characters who appear but are more minor, like Henry, the Scottish twins, Murdoch, even Tunkin, and more. So what was the point of the game? Well, to sum it up as simply as I can, it's like a watered-down, calling-all-engines-themed Mario Party, just without the party and only the minigames. So I guess it's nothing like Mario Party. Basically, there were a few different minigames for your playing ability, my personal favorite being Calling All Engines, where you took control of Thomas to gather other engines for a meeting. You have to stop at signals, dodge obstacles, and collect missing letters to collect characters for the meeting itself. Probably the closest thing to a free roam this game has, and that's really why I spent most of my time on it. There were a few others, which I admittedly remember far less, like Flying to the Rescue, which has you take control of Harold, smuggling unknown packages for Sir Topham Hat, Cargo Ketchup, where you play as Harold again, and try to catch up to Thomas, who left behind some cargo, <laughs> Birdie Beats the Clock, where Thomas gets sick, so now it's up to Birdie to transport kids to school, then there's the Learning Zone, which features a recycling plant game, where troublesome trucks have the appropriate trash sorted into them. A size sorting game with Percy. Count the engines, where you help Sir Topham Hat. Count engine. Fix the tracks, where you fix the tracks before Thomas gets to them. Two different sing-alongs and an engine depot, with the depot containing 10 different character profiles. There's really not much to it. To be fair though, it was also my first exposure into gaming really as a whole, so it wasn't too long before this was replaced by a DS. There was one thing the DS didn't have, though. Well, actually it does. Mine does have this game, since it's jailbroken. But the way I played this game originally was through an emulator on a PC. For a time in my life, it was the only thing I could do on the PC, besides Trains 2006. The Adventure Series for the Sega Genesis. Now, this game is where things really get taken a step up. Not only can you select your own engine, which you'll operate, but the roster in this one is pretty nice as well. We have Percy, James, Duck, Thomas Twice, and Toby. It is worth noting the sprites are a bit wonky. You're really not playing James as much as you're playing Edward during a cosplay event, but you better believe I chose it almost every time. Before the game even starts, it loads in a coloring page, which if you want, you can do. It's also here you can customize yourself or engineer. And then you move on to selecting a difficulty and a game mode. This is the perfect Travel Thomas game, I think, for one reason. And that's why it's on my DS. The Free Roam. You can choose between Percy, Toby, James, all of my favorite characters, and then just roam around this adorable little Sodor. That is all I could ask for in a Thomas game. On the journey, you'll find different troublesome trucks, and you can take them with you too. That's always fun. That's really all you do in Explore, though. My second favorite part is the races. The races put you against each of the playable characters in a total of five races, each one getting a bit harder as you go. What's kind of fun is if you put this on hard and get to the last races on the hard difficulty, they are pretty challenging. They require quite a bit of attention. Since during the races, there's balloons, other engines, mud, candy, plenty of other stuff on the tracks to either avoid or collect. 
Besides race, we also have the game mode, where you're tasked by Topham with collecting the correct trucks and taking them to whatever station he tells you to take them to. Still pretty simple, and sadly, not gonna lie, it does not help you learn the map as much as you'd think it would. But if you ever wanted, it was there. What's cool is if the job is finished in a minute or under, you'll end up congratulated by James, Edward, Thomas, Gordon, or Henry, who tells you that Sir Topham Hat wants to see you. Not Thomas or James if you're playing as them though. I also wish you could actually play as the three railway engines, but alas. Lastly is a game that really is the only plug and play game I think worth playing. The Thomas One by Jack Pacific and J just, just what a game. This thing went so hard, it's stupid. It's really called Right on Time, but nobody calls it that, so it's fine. This game had one feature, or I guess game mode, that I remember over everything, and that is capturing runaway diesels, which basically saw you running around the map trying to pick up Aerie or Bert. Quite a large map, I might add. Definitely didn't help my diesel prejudice, but moving on. What really makes this game special is a lot like the last. The roster of playable characters you actually get. Not only do we have Thomas, Percy, James, in my books already a win, but how about Emily too? Oh, that's not enough? Okay, how about Molly? Yes, Molly is in this game and completely playable. Oh, also cranky, but that's only in his own th He's fine, he's fine. This game's overall plot is pretty simple. Basically, there's a party coming to Sodor, and it's your job to get ready. You'll get a random or various job by Topham, and you and whoever you selected get on your way to do it, while also collecting these tickets that you can use for tokens. And tokens unlock new engines, so uh, yeah, that's important, do that. Plus different power-ups that help you as you go. Did I mention how adorable the Thomas joystick is too? Just look at this thing, look at its classic series face. What is there not to love? And what were the games you had on this thing? Well, balloon catching, which is pretty self-explanatory. Finding freight cars, which is um, also pretty self-explanatory. Collecting passengers, I'm not saying it again. Collecting presents, diesel catching, my favorite part, where you catch a diesel and return them to the engine depot. Lost engine, where you find a lost engine that has run out of coal. Troublesome trucks, which is surprisingly a lot more intimidating where you go to the coaling plant and catch runaway troublesome trucks, take them back to the coal shed and clean up any coal they spill, and lastly, cargo delivering, where you go to Brendam Docks to collect cargo as Cranky and deliver it to a certain station. The map in this game also boasts a ridiculous amount of stations and locations, everywhere from Tidmouth, Cronk, Kildane, to Barrow and Furness and Arlesdale. Sadly, no miniature engines, but it's still cool. And though basically everything in this game is inaccurate in some way, really just how much you can do in it and how overall fun it is just makes the game perfect. Or at least the perfect amount of, wow, this is a lot of Sodor to take in. And just enough to keep me occupied for hours on end. The only thing that stopped me from playing this game was the cables breaking. Apparently that's pretty common with these things. That said though, ladies and gentlemen, those are three Thomas and Friends games that I think are absolutely awesome. Or at least ones that I've played. If you'd like me to talk more about Thomas and Friends games, be sure to comment down below and let me know. Maybe even recommend me a game and we'll kid on playing it. And with all of that being said, as always, call your mother, tell her you love her, be a good person. All right, video's over. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out.